Hello, my name's Lawrence Mead. I'm the regatta director here at Cowsweek. And with quite a few changes to the sailing instructions this year, we thought we would just put up a short video to talk you through some of the key features ahead of the regatta. The number one feature is that we have tried to move as many starts as possible back to here, the Royal Yacht Squadron start line. It is one of the unique features of Cow's Week, uh, racing up and down the green and starting off the, the Royal Yacht Squadron castle with the cannons. We wanted to give that experience for as many classes as possible. And frankly, it is lovely to be able to leave the dock just up the Medina River here if you're in Cow's, come straight out and within a couple of minutes, you're at the start line. Now that has its own tactical challenges. It isn't a perfectly square Olympic line, and frankly, it isn't really meant to be. We accept at Cow's Week that it's a regatta. It's about regatta racing. It's about watching all of the variables, the, the tide, the changing tide. Often at Cow's, we can have the tide going one way uh, at one end of the start line, and if we're on a turn of the tide, it can be going the other way at the other end of the start line. And then, of course, 40 minutes later, that situation has changed. So whilst it's not an Olympic square line, it gives huge amounts of, of, of challenge and opportunity. And that's uh, one of the great things about Cow's Week. We hope you enjoy it as much as, frankly, we enjoy watching it from the, from the battlements up here. Um, to do that, we have started the uh, starts at five minute rolling sequence rather than having a 10 minute gap between them. So the start of one class is the warning signal of the next. Now, that doesn't give a lot of time for people to, to, to assess the start line and uh, make tactical decisions. There are so-called fire breaks in the start sequence. So in the sailing instructions, which are online and you can pick up in your skipper's pack from noon today, um, there are fire breaks built into the starting sequence. So there's four or five starts, sometimes only three starts as a group, as a rolling five minute sequence, and then there's a five minute gap. And that gives everybody a chance to analyze the line, check their pinging if they want to, to line up their, their navigation systems with the ends of the line, etc. So that will all work well, but we would ask that everybody is sensitive to those boats who are about to start. Um, it, it, it's, it's very easy to interfere with somebody else while you're analyzing the line ready for your start. Please be as sensitive as possible about that. Uh, the sailing instructions do give us the right to disqualify people who interfere with another start. And obviously that would be a worst case scenario which we would hate to have to use. But it isn't fair that somebody's start ahead of you is, is spoilt by uh, you coming in as they're trying to start. So I think there is a very happy medium for all of us there, um, but just be sensitive. Now, unfortunately, because of COVID, uh, we spent six weeks preparing a set of sailing instructions, which we then have had to make some very significant changes to. So amendment number one to the sailing instructions has already been issued, and you can get that on the, on the website. We are also uh, having reprinted a, a, a new version of that, which will be available in your skipper's pack. So the full amendment will be available for everybody along with the existing sailing instructions. It is vital, vital that the start times are taken from the amendment and not from the original sailing instructions. Again, our apologies that there is such a massive change, but with COVID entries were considerably different to how they normally are and we've ended up making some changes uh, around that to, get, to deliver great racing. Um, we've been quite radical, as an example, the sports boat class, which was quite sh short on numbers, has been merged into the IRC4 division. So they've now got a dozen very similar boats. They'll have great racing, but moving classes between groups and moving classes across start times uh, has, has meant quite a lot of rethinking. It'll all work. We just need to be sensitive to the amendment that's been issued. The other big difference is that with the rolling five minute start sequence as we describe it, we still do need to have some committee boat starts. It's just not practical. We already have a two hour, 10 minute start sequence here at the, at the castle. So our first start kicks off at 10.30 in, the, in, in a regular weekday. It's 10.45 on the first morning just to give everybody a little more time. Um, but with a 10.30 start, we're still firing the start gun two hours later. So to avoid that being a ridiculous long uh, extended start sequence, we still have some starts at a committee boat. Uh, that is no longer called the Bramble start line. Calling it the Bramble start line effectively located it in a single position, which tied our hands if, things were, if, if conditions were different. So that has been rena renamed committee boat one. And probably 
uh, it'll go to the Bramble Bank quite often. Probably right over there next to uh, West Knoll will be the start line for Committee Boat 1, but not necessarily. As an example, if we had uh, a late southwesterly sea breeze, we may decide to move Committee Boat 1 up towards Bewley somewhere to get her into the new breeze sooner, which means we can get racing going. Now, I know that comes with tidal implications, so we'll, we will consider all of that. But we thought it was a good move just to uh, untie our hands, as it, as it were, and, and make Committee Boat 1 more variable. So once we'd done that, the old white group committee boat became known as committee boat two, and the old black group committee boat has become known as committee boat three. So the white group committee boat, committee boat two, will do the same thing. It will go over to the Bramble Plateau, and it will run racing for the J70s and SB20s on their second and third races of the day. Um, so J70s, SB20 start here on the castle, have a short race, mostly downwind in a southwesterly, over towards uh, the Bramble Bank. Uh, they're finished and they have a couple more races. Committee Boat 3 has got our new featured class of the day racing. So as part of our 5G project, which we will talk about in the week, we are running a featured class and that featured class will have two windward leeward races on Committee Boat 3 and the, the location of that will be advised each day. But again, it'll be where the most suitable location is for the class that is on that boat, on that committee boat, and for the wind conditions. So on day, day one, it's the red wing class, and obviously they will have certain requirements in terms of conditions. So we'll, we'll position committee boat three for that. At the end of the week on the Friday, it's, it's IRC one. We may choose a different location. But each time it is two windward leeward races, and those two races are amalgamated into one score by averaging them for the purposes of the Cows Week overall scoring. So that sounds a little complicated, but when you stop and process it, it's relatively simple. But basically it gives uh, a two race day for, for some boats and it allows us with our 5G technology in the future to perhaps put 360 degree high definition cameras on all of the boats on that race and deliver some really amazing non-stadium sport coverage back to the TV. So it is an experiment. We will see whether you, the competitors, like it and we'll see how much technology we can uh, pull from it. AQL, our technology partners, are working hard uh, to, to get set up so that uh, we can do some things this year. But through, again, through COVID, we're a little further behind than where we want. So there are no onboard cameras this year, but there will be some 5G drone footage and there will be a couple of 5G cameras on, on, commit, on uh, commentary boats with Matt Sheehan out there. So we're looking forward to that. Um, on the social side, we have got for the first time ever the Cows Week opening party uh, for competitors, friends and family. That'll be held at Cows Yacht Haven on the Saturday, uh, on the Saturday, it's Saturday coming up, uh, on Saturday at 18.30. Uh, we've got a fabulous new sponsor, Paul Gidley and his team at Cuvee 450. And they've given us free bubbly for two hours for all of the competitors, family and friends. You need to have the Cows Week app because on the app, there's the invitation that will get you into that party. But once in, there's free bubbly for all. Looking forward to that. And then um, DJ Mark Cavell, who some of you will know as a, a famous star sailor, Olympic silver medalist uh, with Ian Walker. Um, he is going to DJ for us. That kicks off at 18.30. Daily prize givings, another new feature here on the parade to my left. They will be at 5 p.m. each day, but they are for the prizes of the day before. We have so many results, it's just impractical for us to do prize givings on exactly the same day. It, it would be nice to be able to do so. Obviously, you win a race on Monday, you should get the prize on Monday. But Cows Week being so many classes, 40 classes uh, and uh, five or 600 boats, um, we need the extra 24 hours. So the, the prize giving each day is the one for the day before. We have this year a new Musto morning briefing. That'll be at 09.30 each day. Uh, myself and Fiona Campbell, our weather, uh, our weather guru, plus a, a tactical genius of the day, will come along. We'll talk to you from up here at the castle, look at the conditions, see how it looks, and we'll get our tactical geniuses to give us some insight as to how they would play the day. Uh, James Peters, the Olympic 49ers uh, team member, will be with us on the first day. Uh, he's a Musto ambassador, he'll, he'll join us. And Wrapping up, we have some top cocktail tickets available for the Cows Week Limited Cocktail Party here at the Yacht Squadron. 
That is on Sunday. If you want tickets for that, they're available to purchase through the office. Uh, that is a fabulous Sunday afternoon if the sun shines and the forecast does look pretty good. So not many tickets left for that, but please do get it in touch if, you, if you're interested in coming to that. And then finally, wrapping up, the overall prize giving uh, will start at 18.30 on Friday night. Uh, that is the 6th of August, and that will be at Cow's Yacht Haven. Both the opening party and the final prize giving are at Cow's Yacht Haven. Um, that night we'll do two prize givings. We'll do the Friday day prizes, and then starting at about 19.30 we'll do the overall prize giving. So that gives you a, a summary of Cow's Week that's coming up. I can't believe it starts in 48 hours. Uh, thanks to all the team who are busy over there getting the office ready, and skipper packs can be picked up from, from noon today. Um, any questions, please use the Ask Lawrence forum, which is on the Cow's Week website. Thanks very much, and we look forward to seeing you down here.